Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Well, we return with our second Lots of Loom extravaganza. Today, Grey Poupon edition. We've got the High Horology, the Haute de Gamme, the absolute top shelf offerings from a number of exquisite manufacturers, including those that only build within this bracket of the market. So we're going to start off with two high-end sports watches of an aquatic persuasion. We have the Patek Philippe Aquanaut Travel Time 5164 and the Rolex Yacht Master 2. This is the 116680 in steel, the most complicated movement that Rolex makes, respectively travel time and flyback chronograph regatta timer. So lights are going up charging up our Super Luminova. You're going to see that these watches have very distinctive faces in terms of composition and color. LED off, lights coming down, and now you can see these watches are wonderfully distinctive. Now, it's true, the Yachtmaster doesn't quite glow like the Sea Dweller and Submariner Brethren within the Rolex catalog, but it's distinctive, easily legible, and it has that unique, almost teal blue chromolite color of Rolex's in-house luminant. The Aquanaut, by comparison, is more elaborate and more legible. As a sports watch, it's definitely more functional, but it's also exquisitely detailed with the combination of indices, outboard, and Arabic numerals inboard. You'll also note the hands are like torches with a more traditional sort of signal green super luminova color. Lights are coming back. And now we're going to up the ante a bit. I promised you grape pawn. And I'm serving it with a platinum spoon. You're looking at the Alanga Unzona Grand Langa One um, Lumen. So a watch whose own claim to fame is in fact its luminous status with its smoked sapphire over luminescent panoramic date discs and the Audemars Piguet Jules Audemars Tourbillon Repetition. It's a minute repeating tourbillon and I think you're going to find that both of these references with a combined original retail price of over $400,000 between them will put sports watches to shame. Back comes my 400 lumen bike light. I knew this thing would come in handy someday. Fading out with the lights on, you can already tell this is going to be a circus. With the lights out, you can't help but be impressed. These things are supernovas. This is like staring into the reactor core at Chernobyl. Both of these watches, way beyond what you expect of high horology, where most dress watches, frankly, have no luminescent capability. Each of these seems to have been deliberately styled to bring out the most in the luminescent dial to look as spectacular lights out as they do lights on. And for good measure, this is the rare minute repeater that's just as legible in the dark as it is audible in the dark, if not more. You'll also note the luminescent discs of the Grand Longa One Lumen, which are actually luminescent beneath the smoked sapphire. You can see the next digits ready to go. The idea behind the smoked sapphire, and r rather than a completely solid dial, is that subsequent date discs can be energized before they jump up. Lights are coming back on. And now, I've got a little bit of a high horology interloper. Maybe you wouldn't expect to see a Panerai in a high horology loom shootout, although you would expect to see a Panerai in a loom shootout. This one offers the best of both worlds. It's a PAM 399 O series from 2012, one of 100 made, featuring a Minerva 1617 manual wind caliber, hand finished in Villeray. This one definitely punches above its weight and deserves to be compared to the Haute de Gamme from Vacheron, Audemars, and Patek. And of course, Panerai often considered to be the very last word in luxury watch loom with that glorious sandwich dial aesthetic. This one's going to dazzle us. This is the Radiomir 1940 PAM 399. Fire it up and kill the lights. And as you can see, this one may have a vintage style simulated patina loom, but unlike a true patina dial, this one retains all of its luminescence, its brightness, its ferocity when the lights go out. You can see everything from small constant seconds to the minutes and hours at center to the tri arabics and stick indices, an absolute torch. And you can even see from this angle some of the depth effects of the renowned Panerai sandwich dial with a stencil on top of a fully luminescent disc beneath. 
a handsome watch, a spectacular watch with a Minerva movement. This one's equally appealing, lights on and lights out. But I would be remiss to finish without a contrast between beauty, Patek Philippe 5960P in platinum, annual calendar flyback chronograph, and the beast. Richard Mille, RM6001, annual calendar, flyback chronograph, diver, and navigation instrument. Uh, I don't know where to start other than simply say, let's fire up the lumens and douse the lights. As you can see, there's less to tell between them when the lights go out. The Richard Mill, very much like Rolex's Chromalite, features small pips of that almost teal blue. You can see the very subtle sweep of the chronograph seconds hand across the dial. Very distinctive with the lights out, but not, not the overpowering sight that it is with the lights on. This is kind of like a monster hiding in the dark. Whereas the Patek Philippe, surprisingly luminescent, it's small pips of loom and luminescent leaf style hands actually punch above their weight in terms of brightness and ferocity. They really express themselves, so while this is a formal chronograph complication, nevertheless, it does boast most of the legibility of a sports watch. So